Okay, we have a lot of quests to do. At least side quests. Before we do anything else. Although maybe we should continue some of the main story. Uh, but I'm kind of afraid that it will lock us out from the other side quests. So... Hmm... Karen says she'll provide what she can for our voyage to Ash. And has even agreed to forgo payment. Until our return, that is. Hopefully we'll all return. Maybe we should. I mean, I could just reload my save. Say it all you like. It doesn't make it true. What were you two talking about? Ah, Clive. I was wondering when you'd arrive. Please tell me you've come to take our young prodigy here off my hands. Mm. I'm not, not here really for that. Mid. I need information on Ash. Then why not ask Molly if you can look in one of her ovens? <sighs> Go on. As soon as the Enterprise is ready, we'll be setting out for Drake's spine. And we're going to need a safe place to land. Preferably one that won't seem a shit blown to shit and splinters. If it were that easy, do you think Walud would have resisted invasion for so long? Very little is known of Ash, and the information we do have is spotty and outdated. We have the good King Barnabas to thank for that. Walud's borders have been closed to outsiders since the day he seized the throne. If there is anywhere safe to land, you won't find it on my map. Then tell us what we will find. I'm sure you know better than we do. But no splinters! All right, all right, if it will get you out of my hair. But interrupt me, and it's over. Understood? Understood. Barnabas Tharm, the one they call the Last King. Understand him, and you will understand the kingdom of Walud. Barnabas was only a boy when he arrived from beyond the southern seas, and barely a man before he united the ragged tribes of Ash. And having unleashed them upon the formidable Veldemark, he set his throne upon the ancient kingdom's ruins. The victory sent shockwaves around Valisthea, Tales of Odin's might spreading through every court, parlor, and drinking hall in the realm. Note that this was in the year 843, and that the king still sits upon his throne some 40 years later, quite untouched by time. Walud's recent inaction left many wondering if Odin had lost his appetite for war. And yet here we are. The Einherjar was committed to the fray, a bold declaration of intent. Orcs swarm around Drake's Fang, and throngs of Akashic haunt canvas streets. Though how precisely the havoc they wreak serves Walud remains unclear. Regardless, if the order to attack truly came from King Barnabas, then one thing is certain. Walud has achieved the impossible and made bedfellows of beast men and the ether adult alike. All of which is a roundabout way of saying that you will be in unknown territory when you set foot on Ash. Much of the continent has already been lost to the blight, and what few ports remain will be fiercely guarded. And that is to say, naught of its natural defenses. Offshore currents will cast an ill-equipped ship out to sea one moment and dash it against the rocks the next. But then the Enterprise is anything but ill-equipped. And Mid has made land there before. Now, if only there were someone with an intimate knowledge of the Shadow Coast and where a daring gentleman might put ashore. You see, Clive, you had the answer all along. Do you think you can get us back to that beach, Mid? 
Picked you up from it, didn't I? Not that it were easy. The currents were right, bastard. But then, if it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be worth doing, would it? Well said. Thank you, Lady Vivian. If a few morsels of common knowledge and a sprinkling of tavern talk are worthy of your thanks, I wonder what genuine intelligence might earn me. Probably more visits. Mid, I need everyone in the ale hall now. I'll fetch Joshua from the shelves. Aye, aye, Captain. Visit the shelves. Did we do that now? Doesn't seem like the quest closed. Phoenix, heal thyself. Huh, but didn't Joshua leave? So... Maybe it's Jyoti? Oh, it is. Grace, stay strong. Hmm. My Lord Marquis. Oh, we can ask about Jyote. It was the greatest honor of my life. To be appointed protector to his grace. I have served him in that capacity since he first began his journey across Valisthea. The purpose of which was twofold. To further the Undying's knowledge of Ultima, and to further his grace's knowledge of you, my lord. After you learned of your survival, your brother insisted that we try to trace your movements. Thanks to the investigations of my fellow acolytes, we learned of your having taken the name of Sid. But now... Our journey together is at an end. His grace bids me remain here and protect those you and he hold there. So he also I cares for you. you, my lord. If I might be so bold, please look after him in my stead. Oh, of course! Of course! Yote, is anything the matter? You seem troubled. Perhaps I might be able to help. My lord. Y yes Perhaps you might. It's your brother. His condition continues to worsen, though he does his best to hide it. The lesion on his chest pains him more with each passing day. I had feared as much. There are certain elixirs which can ease the suffering of those afflicted by the curse, but... But? But his grace's case is severe. The drafts I have been able to prepare for him thus far have ceased to have any real effect. So I consulted with Talia and certain of my comrades among the Undying about the possibility of finding something stronger. And thankfully, a recipe was found. The only problem being that the critical ingredient is exceptionally hard to come by. And our supplies are almost exhausted. Unless we can secure more soon, your brother's anguish will likely become unbearable. My lord, I know that I have no right to make demands of you. But would you help? Of course. For Joshua's sake. Not even a question. For Joshua. Anything. Thank you, my lord. So, what is this critical ingredient? A rare herb by the name of Stonerwort. Stonerwort? It grows only where the ether is densest. The vigor it stores in its stems helps to counteract the curse. We discovered a patch near the aqueduct in Rosaria. But alas, yet more ether has erupted from the earth there recently, leaving the whole area flooded. The search continues for a new source. One that we might reach without being turned. So it's only that you can't reach it? The stone and water itself is unharmed by the flood? Well... Yes, but... Then I shall go in your stead. Oh, but, my lord... You've yet to find another source, correct? So for now, the aqueduct is our best hope. Besides, I'm a dominant. The ether can't hurt me. Right. Well, if you're sure, my lord... 
Positive. Stonewort is easily identified by its blood red blooms. Search around the aqueduct, and you're sure to find some soon enough. I shall remain here and prepare the other ingredients. Blood red. Okie dokie. We'll try to find those flowers. We should take How some of you the... Your benefactors are a generous lot. Let's you earn take this. it. Ooh, ability point, clutch mine. Okay, I was thinking... Should I just grab the other quests as well and just go on? Or just... No, no. I'll just take a quest and then follow it through... And then May take I another quest. How do you split the sea? Could start with like two at least. This even weirder science I'm gonna do probably last. Because I don't think it'll be something story wise. Or maybe there will be something story-wise, because we're heading for all in no reason to ruins. Otherwise. Well, then that changes everything. Hmm. What are you talking Flight, about? You must listen to this. Lorsman, tell him. Do you recall when we spoke before on the divinity of Ultima? Well, it inspired me to delve deeper into the subject. And what I discovered appears to agree with the findings of His Grace. You will recall that my quest to uncover Ultima's origins began with the mural at Phoenix Gate. Mm -hmm. But while I've always known it to be important, its secrets have heretofore eluded me. Now, however, I believe I know where to find a more complete example. One that will reveal all we seek. Master Clive, have you ever in your travels chanced to hear of the Circle of Malleus? I would think not, few have. But there was once a time when the faith flourished, the oldest known religion in the Twins, and though its popularity eventually waned on storm, hints of its dogma remain embedded in more modern faiths such as the Crystalline Orthodox. Wait, you said it waned on storm? What of ash? Religious monuments are often torn down or repurposed when new faiths rise to prominence. but. If no new faith arose, then perhaps the ancient temples might still stand. Interesting. And so, you see now why I must accompany you to Walud. It would appear the past still has much to teach us. Though in this case, it would not have been possible without the musings of Moss. <laughs> to think that you carried a copy of my old mentor's chronicles all along. I am relieved to discover it in good hands. I shall guard it with my life. Joshua, if you're finished here, join me in the ale hall. I need to speak to everyone before we leave. Right away. If it please your grace, might I one day borrow the chronicles for a short while? Of course, Lorsman Hippocrates. You need but ask. Mm hmm Spreading knowledge. That is very good. Journal of Moss and the Circle of Malleus. Let's read up on this. An ancient religion once prominent across the entirety of Valistia. Its key ideologies were note rooted in the sacred nature of the Mother Crystals and the worship of Ultima as a god. Uh, though long since faded, scholars believe the faith eventually branched off into what is now widely known as the Crystalline Orthodox. Oh, interesting. Journal of Moss. Uh, the Annals of Moss and uh, the Chronicler. A scholar of Valistian history noted for his singular insight indeed. Moss's journal is one of the few histories to speak at any length concerning the ancient circle of Malleus and the creature they worshipped as their god, Ultima. 
Both Moss and his journal were all but removed from the public life at the insistence of rival scholars. But at Joshua's request, the Undying were able to track down a copy of the Pride's Tome. Hmm. The Circle of Malleus and the creature they worshipped is Ultima. And that was on, on Storm and Ash. Oh, I've got... I've got some letters that acquire my attention. Ooh. My apologies. By now you've all heard where we're going and why. So I won't bother you with the boring details, only the important ones. If we attempt to approach Stone here by sea, there's a good chance we'll be sighted and fall prey to the capital's artillery. So instead, we'll disembark on the southwest coast and make for Drake's spine on foot. I say we, but... It's highly likely the entirety of Ash is under the rule of Ultima. A large party would only attract unwanted attention. Right. As well as slow our march and require supplies which may be difficult to obtain. Only Joshua and I will be going. And a scout. Preferably a good one. Gav, do you know of any? You bet your ass I do. Might still borrow some of Lady Vivian's maps, though. Just in case, like. Once you've dropped us off at the Shadow Coast, you need to retreat into neutral waters, fly merchant colors, and stay inconspicuous. If you sense any danger at all, you leave us behind and return to Storm. Inconspicuous is my middle name. But like hell am I leaving anyone behind. The ship ain't going nowhere till your scurvy mugs are smiling on deck. <laughs> Jill. The Enterprise will appear a tempting target for Royalists and Pirates alike. You're to stop anyone boarding. Don't worry. I'll keep the ship and her crew safe. You'll be needing passage home, after all. But... Very well. If there are no questions, I'll see you all at the docks. Let me know when you're leaving. I want a word before you go. Of course. Well, we're not gonna leave now. Because we have several quests to complete. I am certain we will find what we seek in Ash. And learn the truth of Ultima's origins. Oh, that is gonna be so, 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 so interesting. The story is unraveling itself. What do we have on the hunts board? Uh, four. Well, I'm not going to do those now, unless they are in my way when I'm doing the quest. Uh, no other quest, except for back at my room. Haha. <laughs> well, I'll take them the list, later. You? Here you go. Uh, maybe go to Martha or Lubar or Isabel. We finish hers first and then go to Martha. Ooh, I don't think we have to like decide who we're gonna help. We're gonna help them all. I don't think it's gonna be like a timed event. Like, oh, you chose Martha, so now Isabel and her crew dies. Clive, I was just about to send for you. I'd like you to take something to Sir Wade up in Eastpool. 
Seeds for planting. Thought mm. it was about time they started growing their own food. I'll keep providing them with whatever they need in the meantime, of course. But if East Pool's going to survive, it's got to be able to fend for itself. As of those poor mm. bearers. They've lived their whole lives in servitude, but now they're their own masters. Small wonder they ain't got the foggiest out to provide for themselves. So it's up to us to teach them. And if you're wondering why you, well, the Wagoneers taking supplies up that way have been coming back with more and more reports of Akashic around the village of late. Sir Wade's putting a brave face on it, but I think even he's starting to worry. And if he's likely to share those concerns with anyone, it's you. All right. Thanks. Wouldn't ask if I didn't have to. There. That should be enough to keep them in Gazal Greens for a few years at least. <laughs> Gizal greens. Not the most mouth-watering crop, I'll admit. But they're hardy, they grow fast, and they fill a hole. Better that than something that'll wither away at first frost. And chocobos love them too, which is no small thing. When I say all of us need to pull together to get East Pool back on its feet, I mean all of us. They ain't exactly succulent, but cook them right, and they're just about bearable. I'll take your word for it. Anyway, Sir Wade'll know what to do with them. And if he don't, well, I'll go up there and show him myself. I'm sure you will. Rekindling the flame. Two. Hmm, so let's get these Gizal Greens to Wade. A precious, precious Wade. Over there. And then after Martha's quest, I think I'm gonna do Isabel's. I heard the Guardian saying we're supposed to grow up. Ah, Lord Rossfield. What brings you to Eastpool? A delivery from Martha. Here, eat these. These are Gizal green seeds. Martha's keen to cut the apron strings, then, is she? I jest, of course. You see, I had thought we might be able to revive the old wheat fields, but they'd long since gone to seed, only without the seeds. Martha was hoping you might be able to show the bearers how to plant and tend these, so that they'll be able to fend for themselves. That's not a bad idea. These bearers had only recently escaped their bonds before we brought them here. They know little of freedom, of providing for themselves and their loved ones. Unless we teach them how to live like free men, I fear that all we have achieved in bringing them here is to exchange one master for another. Not that myself and the Guardians have been the best example to them so far, subsisting almost entirely on Martha's charity as we do. It's about time we all started to provide for ourselves, bearers and Guardians alike. Unfortunately, we've been a little too busy of late to focus on much besides bolstering our defenses. There have been alarming reports of... The Horde is closing in. They're coming, so wait, all of them. Time it all. I thought we'd have more time. Gather the men in the square. Send to the rest for reinforcements. Yes, Sir Wade. The Horde. A Kashek, a veritable legion of them. They've been seen prowling around the northern reaches for a while now. We don't have the numbers to hold back a swarm that size. I had hoped to build a perimeter wall so that myself and the Guardians might be able to defend the village, but... Now you're out of time. Well, we're here, Precisely. so... If reinforcements from the rest arrive before they do, we may just scrape through, but I fear that's rather an enormous if. What if you could call on reinforcements from Eastpool? You mean the bearers? We brought them here so they might live, not die, fighting for their lives. So wait. You said you lack men to defend the village. Are the bearers not men? Do they not wish to see Eastpool saved? Hmm. Though they may not be trained soldiers like your guardians. 
See what, what you're help thinking. They are able to offer could still prove the difference between victory and defeat. Two, two. That is a very right, good idea. I will appeal to them. Will it work? We'll see. My friends, I humbly beg your aid. We guardians are few and our enemies many. But I swear we can defeat them with you at our side. You would send us to the slaughter. Uh, that's not Serve what we said. Bait for those fiends so that you and your men might be spared. That's not what we were thinking. Think we trusted you. Say what you will. A home is not worth dying for. But it is worth fighting for. Sir Wade fights to give you lot a chance. Just like I do. Just like Sid does. We all wanted to give you a home where you could be free. And you got one, didn't you? This place, East Ball. This is your village, your home. Exactly. And if you don't fight to protect what's yours, you'll lose it. And the next place, you'll lose that as well. No, I'm right. This world wants to take everything from you. Everything. Your homes, your freedom, your very lives. So then, are you going to stand by and let that happen to you? Are you going to accept fate like good little Bran did and die having never stood up for yourselves? Or will you fight like free men and women? I love that so much. Frying pan gang. <laughs> well, what are you doing? All right. Give me a sword. Or a frying pan. I never dreamt I'd have a home of my own. And now that I have... I don't want to lose it. Exactly. I will protect what's mine, or die trying. That's the spirit. We all will. Free men and women fighting together. Oh, yeah. 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 This don't right. include the children. For Eastpool. For Eastpool. Thank you, Martha. Don't mention it. Just promise me one thing, that you'll show them how freeborn fight. <laughs> Gladly. Well, if it was numbers you were lacking, you certainly won't be now. Thanks to you. Me? Oh, I just love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Lord Rossfield, my lady, we're ready. So what's the plan of action? We'll divide our forces into several small detachments, each made up of guardians, bearers, and guards from the rest. These will position themselves at strategic points around the village. Upon engaging with the Akashic, each detachment will keep the creatures occupied as best they can, steadily retreating all the while. You're going to lure them into the village? I am. We will have neither the time nor the resources to treat the wounded, so injuries must be avoided at all costs. Instead, we will focus purely on defense at first. By coordinating our withdrawal through the use of messengers drawn from among the bearers, we will aim to have the swarm converge at a point of our choosing. With luck, that point will be the village square. The perfect place for our most able warriors to surround them and fall upon them. And for you and I to finish them off. The sound plan. Good. 
but one that'll require a leader with a cool head and strong nerves to coordinate the retreat. I'd say you have both in abundance to wait, but you'll be needed. Please, leave the last of the fighting to me. Mm-hmm. Ha! And let you have all the glory. <laughs> Sir, wait! They're here! Then you know what you must do. We work together. Everyone playing their part. Each shielding the other that no man might fall. That Eastpool might live on. For Rosaria. For Rosaria! We've no time to argue, my lord. I'll do as you ask. And I will do as you ask. Suppose we'd better do our bit too, then, eh? Right you are, Martha. Okay, let's just kill them one by one. The calm before the storm. We didn't even have to find them. And here it comes. They just ended up here. I will not let this village fall. Well then. No, I don't want this village to fall either. Oh, you're sure. This village would be perfect for for the bear. This one. And it's a good place to grow food. How long can we keep on defending? Because Clive, Jill, and Joshua won't be there. We'll have to go after Alderman. And then we don't know what's gonna happen. Over here! What if. What if we don't make it? surely do make us cry in every single game so why would this be any different the only good ending really really good ending we really had was in the final fantasy 10 2 if you got the perfect ending that is Well, maybe the other endings are fine to you guys as well, but the perfect ending for me was exactly the ending I wanted. I wanted Yuna and Titus to re reunite. But we usually get these very bittersweet endings. But I wouldn't be shocked. Enough! Here we go. What now? Will there come a bigger enemy or are we done? Yeah, nothing of interest. Looks like that's the last of them. Lord Rushfield! Change of plan! Why? What is it? Owl from the rest. An Akashic curl's been sighted on Rhiannon's ride and is headed in their direction. Well, the better half of her guard is here. So wait, how many Akashic remain in East Pool? Hard to say. My men are still facing some resistance, but I think the worst is behind us. I could order a detachment or two to fall back and... No, we'll go. No. Let them finish the job. You stay here too, Sir Wade. Your men need you. I'll go after the curl. Yep. Join me only when East Pool is won. If you're sure, my lord. We're May sure. Founder protect you. I just hope that we don't lose anyone. Like Martha or Wade, in this case. So it's over there. Come to tell me an Akashic curl's heading towards the rest? Yep. Get yourself down there. We can handle things here. Oh, I'll be going there.
gonna see if there are any Akashic here. Faster. Just so I can make it easier for them. Maybe not. Ah, uh, there's one goblin, another one. <laughs> That's so much fun. <laughs> Ambrosia just kicking the shit out of the goblins. It's here, right? Yep. There it is. You look very blue today. With me, Togo. We got it down pretty fast. Just getting stronger and stronger. All right. Back to East Pool. So, did they make it? Oh, it's awfully quiet. Oh, they're there. <gasps> Got a little bit worried. And Martha? Lord Rossfield. The curl, is it? Is it? It's dead. Yes. Thank the founder for that. And for you, my lord. We were able to eradicate the rest of the horde. I have guardians posted around the village to keep watch for further attacks, but all seems quiet for now. I hesitate to say it, but I think it might be over. I think it might. We did it. We saved Eastpool. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. No, Sir Wade. It's us who should be thanking you. You brought us together. Showed us what it means to fight for what you hold dear. We never had nothing to call our own before. We didn't know what it meant to protect it. But now we do. We really do. Forgive us, Sir Wade. You and your people saved us. And still we doubted you. But there's no doubt in my mind anymore. We're free men now. So we have to start acting like it. We have to fight to protect what's ours. To protect Eastpool. And we shall. We all shall. Together. This is our home. And if anyone or anything tries to take it away, they'll have us to answer to. Come on then. Let's get to work. This village isn't going to rebuild itself. They're not slaves anymore. No. They're Rosarians. Your father took pity on the bearer's plight, and I believe if he were still with us today, this is what he would have wanted. I believe you might be right. I shall remain here, my lord, and do what I can to help rebuild the village. After all, this is my home now, too. And I could hardly call myself an East Poolian if I didn't pull my weight. 
I think you'll find it's East Pudlian, Sir Wade. But you East should Pudding? be proud all the same. I'll have to pull my weight too. Can't have the rest getting outclassed. Speaking of which, I ought to be getting back. Can we continue to count on your support, Martha? Of course. And I'll be counting on yours too. Us Rosarians have got to stick together, haven't we? Indeed we have. And Clive, come by the Golden Stables when you get the chance. I ain't paid you for delivering them seeds yet. Mm. All right. I will. Lord Rossfield, do you remember our very first mission together? Clearing the goblins from the Stillwind Marshes? Yes! <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> There's one side that I shall never forget. You, facing off against that giant mauble. Not a trace of fear on your face. Since that day, there have been more than a few times when I felt like giving up. When the odds seemed so stacked in the enemy's favor, I thought I may as well just lay down my sword and surrender. But every time I would think back to the look in your eyes that day and remember what it means to be a shield. Know that whatever trials Eastpool may face, I shall never lose courage. Thanks to you. So Wade, you have always been a true shield. I know that Eastpool, and indeed all of Rosaria, will be safe in your hands. Thank you, my lord. I know the rest of the world will be safe in yours. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'm so glad they kept Wade alive. And where to now? Ooh. They're rekindling the flame. Martha wanted to talk to us, pay us back. Although we don't really need the money, so... Uh, but we could do with materials for that German sword. The hero Got their um, something. It's lucky you came by when you did, eh? Not only did my seeds get delivered, but you went and saved Eastpool and all. I just did what I could. And it's only right that you get rewarded for it. Take it before I change my mind. What is Thank it? What you, is Martha. it? So, East Pool's finally back on its feet again. And a home to free bearers. Who'd have thought we'd see the day, eh? Well, it was your idea. I know that, but I never stopped to think what it would mean. Bearers in charge of themselves, thinking for themselves, working for themselves. Like your hideaway, but not even hidden away. Though I suppose the rest ain't much different nowadays. You know... Bearers living free like that. Reminds me of when I first met Sid. Loath as I am to recall that particular day. I take it you didn't always see eye to eye. What happened? Well... If you really want to know, I started doing what I do long before I met Sid. In fact, that's how I met him. Or at least how he came to meet me. He showed up at the stables one day, asking questions about who'd been buying up bearers. Founder knows what he thought I was doing with them. Running a hunt, poking around in their innards. Something awful anyway. Me, I thought he was a new constable. Thought the game was up. But somehow we both managed to work out what each other was about. And before I knew it, the cheeky arse was rattling on at me about how I was doing it all wrong. <laughs> After all my hard work. <sighs> told me I was giving them relief, but not freedom. That my bearers were still dying as slaves. Got right under my skin, it did. Told him if he didn't like it, he could bugger off and report me to the garrison. And do you know what he did? He smiled. And then he laughed. And then I did the same. We made a pact that day, that whenever one of us was in need, the other would always be there for him. And you were. 
Well, we both wanted the same thing. To make life better for bearers. Just like your dad. Do you know, I was born right around the time Elwyn became Archduke. Growing up, I saw how he tried to change things. He certainly didn't lack for ambition, that one. Indeed. But the loftier one's ambitions, the harder they are to achieve. Which is why those of us who follow in their footsteps need to finish what people like Sid and my father started. Exactly. Suppose you're right, aye. And if we don't manage it, there's always them who come after us. Good thing we've got a few half-decent sorts waiting in the wings, eh? It's almost enough to give you a little bit of hope. Hmm. <laughs> Just a little. Anyway, enough nattering. Better get back to work. Let's see about making everyone some dinner, shall we? The least the folks who saved Eastpool deserve is a hot meal. And you and me ain't gonna save the world on an empty stomach neither. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Quest complete. I wonder if there will be a Rekindling the Flame 3. Ooh, signboard. Okay, I almost thought it was Don't some kind of material. Else. You went alone in this fight. Whenever you find yourself in need, be it of money, men, or a bowl of heart stew, the stable's door is always open. We're fine. We don't need any money, at least. Ooh, there's the even weirder science. Let's do this one that's close by. Good girl. Run like the wind. Mm, you can really see the ether flood here. It's all blue. It looks so funny. Could we go this way or do we have to go across the bridge? Yeah. Across the bridge it is. I'm guessing it's here. Here's the aqueduct. Now to find our stone wart. Yote mentioned blood red petals. Blood red petals. Come here, Torgol. You're gonna get some pets. Fetch! <laughs> When did you get so big? How many treats do we have for Torgol? Infinite? It seems that way. Ooh, a Gigas. Just my luck. The first mini boss. I won't be picking anything till they're gone. Ouch. There's only one thing for it. You're no match for me and Torgo. Get him. The music has been so good. And I really like Barnabas theme. It's like so ominous, but still very good. Can't wait to hear the music when we eventually have to fight Barnabas. Although, I would like for Barnabas to turn on Ultima. That would be something. Like having the villain on our side. Like he realizes something. Or maybe his mother can talk him out of it, if she's in this world. 
but I think she might not be. Because it looked like he missed her. So we have gotten nothing of Barnabas' mother. We only got to see her. Ultima transformed into her. Other than that, we have no information. So hopefully we'll get more information or else I'll just be having Here it is. questions Better and no answers. As much as I can before reinforcements arrive. I'm still like right. uh that should do it. Let's get these back to Yote. I'm still like wondering why why they're almost trying to kill Clive since he's Muthos. I wouldn't want him to die. Like, of course they want him to absorb all the other icons, but still, it's, it's a little bit... Yeah, it, they, because they don't know if he's gonna be alive or not. Yote. I brought back all the stone and water I could find. Will this be enough? Three of them. Yes, my lord. Thank you. I'm sure it will serve us until we can find another source. I'm very glad to hear it. You and His Grace are very much alike, you know. You think only of how you might help others. And never of the danger to yourselves. No more than you have, minding my brother. You've risked a lot for him. And I thank you for it. I am honored that you should say so. But I beg you, my lord. Do not give too much of yourself for the sake of others. We could not afford to lose you. I'll keep that in mind. Clive is just like that. But also like Jill said, that he needs to take care of himself as well. Because he puts everyone for himself. That's just how he is. So he needs other people to remind him that he needs to look out for himself as well. Now we're going to Northreach, gonna help Isabella with whatever has happened. Probably an ether flood. Probably. The Dominion's all but done for. Was that shouting I heard from the barracks? Am I going the right way? Do you think he was the only one? Yeah. And you're just gonna fall into line. I don't trust this duke. Yeah, it's even weirder science. That one I'll probably oh, do last. Clive. What am I to do? My wards and I may soon be without a home. What's happened? The High Cardinal has descended from his lofty throne and taken up residence here in Northreach. The High Cardinal? What? Leader of the Council of Elders, second only to his radiance at the head of the Imperial government. Not that any of those things still exist. Now he goes by his noble title, the Duke of Oriflam. And what does he want with Northreach? He wants to transform it into a military stronghold, a foundation upon which to build a new Sambrek. He's already secured the support of the various army remnants, with promises that they shall be afforded the respect they deserve in his empire. One built on the confiscated property of the people. He would rob the populace to pay for it. Believe me, I have used every means of persuasion to discourage him from this folly. But for whatever reason, he will not listen to me. Hmm. What does Captain Philippe make of this? When the town was under attack, it was him the soldiers rallied around. Couldn't he use that influence again? How? By speaking out against one of the most powerful men in Sambrek. 
A man whose stated aim is to revive the Empire Philippe's comrades swore to serve, and to improve the soldier's lot within it. The captain can offer them a regular supply of gruel, and an occasional trip to the Vale to help them forget the terrors they face each day. The Duke offers them a vision of strength and safety. No. Any attempt to incite mutiny would cost Philippe the support of his men, if it did not cost him his life. But given the mood around town, mutiny may yet be unavoidable. The people have little appetite for further deprivation, least of all when it serves only to elevate others. Who could blame them? Clive, would you appeal to the Duke on my behalf? Ah, uh, yes, we have to. Northreach. You have the respect of the soldiers, and they will take you to his eminence if you ask them. And unlike Philippe, no bonds of loyalty prevent you from speaking your mind to the man. Well? True. Will you try? You could hardly fare any worse than I did. I don't know about that. I mean, you said every mean possible. Thank you, Clive. Tell me then, where will I find this Duke of Oriflam? In the garrison? Overseeing the troops, yes. All right. Wish me luck. Under new management. Okay, we'll help you. At least Jill isn't with, with us now. You before, at the remembrance ceremony. Let's hope I didn't make a strong impression. Let's hope. I don't trust this duke. Because if Isabella says something that might trouble Jill, oh, I might not have to do this side quest. We already have a leader in the day. They do really trust Isabella here. Oh, sorry about that. You're the dame's man, aren't you? You got some business with the captain? No, actually. With the Duke. I was hoping I might be able to speak with him. We're under orders not to let any civilians pass. I'm not but any civilian. You should be all right. His eminence has heard all about you and your heroics. Wait here. I'll go and ask. Why did the Cardinal even come here? So... You are the sellsword who lent his aid to the garrison. The Empire owes you a debt, and I shall see it repaid. But tell me, is it wealth that you seek or favor? Neither, Your Eminence. I thought only to inquire about your plan to turn Northreach into a stronghold. Ah, I see. You are worried the expanded garrison will render your services redundant. Yet you needn't be. A proud fighting man like yourself shall always have a place here. Pride of place, in fact. For too long has the contribution of the noble soldier been under-reckoned. But no more. For it is they who shall see the Holy Empire rebuilt, beginning right here in Northreach. Why here, Your Eminence? The town has been fortunate enough to escape largely unscathed from the recent troubles. Her defenses are sound and her garrison well prepared. Which is more than can be said for Oriflam or Twinside. The Empire wants for a capital and I believe Northreach to be the perfect place. With hmm. Cairn Norvant as her citadel. Once we have seen to the re-fortification of both the town and the castle, we need only build a wall around both to create a city that would be the envy of the twins. Plans are already underway for the construction. Soon enough, these thralls shall learn that they are no match for the might of Sandbrek. I fear you underestimate how dangerous these creatures are, Your Eminence. Should they return in force, you will need all the people of Northreach to come together in defense of the town. 
Something they may be loath to do if they've been deprived of their worldly goods. Mm -hmm. The people will do as their leaders command. If Sandbreck is to be rebuilt, she will require a functioning government. One whose authority is beyond question. That is why this levy is necessary. So that any man who wishes to join the army might do so and be fed, outfitted and paid as befits a defender of the Empire. And yet there are those who persist in peddling the treasonous lie that I seek to steal from the people and drive them from their homes. I Isn't that... <laughs> suspect they're afraid of losing what little they have left. Precisely. And who's the common this? folk have little and less, and you mean to deprive them of even that? You would sow the seeds of your new empire in your own salted earth. Sabine, we have discussed this. Yes, and I told you then how putting the empire before her citizens would lead only to revolt. Without an empire, there are no citizens. And in yours, there will be only beggars. Is that what Griga wills for her people? Do not take her name in vain, Sabine. I'll come they back know later. each other. <laughs> Clive's like, oh, I don't want to be in the revolt. middle of this. I wonder what the people really think of the Duke's plan. It wouldn't hurt to ask them, I suppose. Well, we could ask the around. Even those on the other side of the wall. But it feels like they trust the dame, Sabine, Isabella, more. You are embarrassing me. Ooh. <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself. One at a time now. Are they, like, related or something? For everyone. Because of the way Thank you. they're speaking to each other. Now let's see what the peoples you think he was the have only one who survived? to say. We already heard someone say we already have a leader in the day. That's so cool. All right there. What is it you're after, sir? Your opinion. Just your opinion, actually. I wondered what you thought of the Duke of Oriflam. <laughs> oh, him. Not much. None of us traders do. It's thanks to nobles like him that we had to set up shop this side of the wall in the first place. Couldn't have the rabble getting any closer to the holy capital, could they? And now he's trying to drive us out completely, threatening to take everything we got from us if we don't clear off. If the dame said she wanted him run out of town, I'd be straight through that checkpoint tar bucket in hand. <laughs> okay. You made your opinion heard loud and clear. Dominion's all but done for. And it's lucky. How about you, miss? I've been hearing a lot of talk about a certain duke. Nothing good, I'll wager. <laughs> Going around acting like he owns the place. And with hardly a word to the dame. This is her town, not his. Exactly. I take it you'd rather she was in charge. As far as I'm concerned, she still is. Just need his eminence to sod off back to Oriflame. <sighs> Very clear message. Last one. So how do we deliver this message? Clive, should we just recite everything that they told us? I mean, we shouldn't sugarcoat anything. They want you to sort off. Question, if you don't mind. What do you think of the Duke of Oriflam? Mm, don't get me started. You build a life for yourself somewhere, only for some noble to turn up and tell you you've got to hand it all over to him. If he thinks his name and his chains give him the right to empty our purses, he's in for a rude awakening. We'll do whatever it takes to keep what's ours. Whatever it takes. Well, the people seem united enough. What about the soldiers? Hmm. That could be interesting. Well, United, I mean, we ask three people. Three. Although I don't think anyone would be on the Duke's side. Because everyone seemed to have this huge respect for the dame. But we're gonna go ask the soldiers, which I also think will be in the dame's favor. 
I mean, she's a business lady. Once they trust her more than a duke, a noble duke. Sabine, you are embarrassing me. Okay, <laughs> over yourself. where? Up here? No? Oh, there. <laughs> I'm blind. You. You're the one who was talking to his eminence. On the dame's behalf, yes. I was trying to persuade him not to take the people's goodwill for granted, but... It seems my words fell on deaf ears. What do you think of his plans? I'm a soldier, mate. He tells me what to do, not the other way round. So you don't have so an I opinion? I respect for the dame. But I've got a family to look after. That's where my loyalties lie. Not with the town or the empire, but with my wife and children. If the Duke can get us the men and the equipment we need to fight off those blue-skinned bastards, I don't care how he does it. I mean, he has got a point as well, cynical soldier. <laughs> he was indeed. I hear the Duke of Oriflam plans to turn this town into some sort of fortress. Do you think that's a good idea? It's not for me to say. Serious All soldier. I know is that unless the Emperor orders me otherwise, his eminence's word is law. Look, no one likes all these taxes and tariffs, but empires don't come for free. Once Sandbrack is back on her feet, we'll all reap the benefits. Well, the third one has probably the same opinion. Like, they don't really care. They care about who will get the job done. And who pays them. It's not only control of the I had to go to my cat, Excuse but now me, I'm back. A moment. I wondered if you'd mind sharing your thoughts on the Duke of Oriflam. Well, <laughs> he's made a lot of enemies coming in the way he did. I mean, look around us. You can see the state the realm's in. The traders might not like having the screws put on them, but if they volunteered a few more of their hard-earned gill before things got bad, maybe they wouldn't have to. I think the Duke's got a point when he says rebuilding the Empire is the best way of making sure we're all protected. And if that means people who don't know one end of a saw from another have to make way for those who do, well, that's just how it goes. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see what Philippe makes of all this. Well, it feels like he's gonna be more on the Dame's side. But we don't know. Maybe the Duke swayed him. We have no clue. Welcome back. Wraiths give you any trouble. Captain, do you have a moment? But he seemed pretty loyal. You? Certainly. Clive, wasn't it? Thank you for last time. How can I help you? I wanted to ask you about the Duke of Oriflam. Do you intend to go along with his plan? But to tell you the truth, I'm in two minds. Whoa. It's my sworn duty as a captain of the Imperial Army to obey his orders. But I can't say I agree with him. Philippe, I remember you saying that you became a soldier to protect the people you loved. The dame included. That's right. I did. Well, she doesn't agree with the Duke's orders either. She thinks they could tear Northreach apart. And she's probably right. Thank you, Clive. I know what I need to do now. Protecting the people I love is what matters. Doesn't matter how. Well, duty calls. So I better go. Thanks again. It seems Philippe wants to do the right thing at least. I expect Isabel will be pleased to hear that. If nothing else. Well, she doesn't only have him on her side. It's also all of the townspeople. What do you think? Seems like. So let's just go tell her this.
Ah, oh, Clive. How did you fare? Were you able to speak with the Duke? Yeah. I was, but... So Northreach is to be a fortress after all. Well, it will certainly help to hold back the thralls. There's no denying that. Though I doubt it will come as much consolation to the townspeople whose worldly goods are confiscated to pay for it. They deserve to be heard, Clive. To have a say in this new empire the Duke means to build. Sadly, his eminence values their obedience more than their opinions and hopes to reassert the authority of the state. I fear he sees the people as mere pawns on his chessboard to be sacrificed for the greater good. Needless to say, they themselves are of a different opinion, and would rather their destinies were in your hands. The soldiers, meanwhile, are content to follow their orders. And not just because of the Duke's rank, but because of his vision. I thought as much. Had I sworn to protect Sambrek, I dare say I too would want nothing more than to see it rise from the ashes. Thank you for trying, but the battle is lost. I don't know about that. Ooh, what you know that we what don't. Your uniform. I handed it in, along with my resignation. Told He's a loyal one. I wished them well, but that I owe it to those I love to call it a day. But why? Because I realize what really matters to me. Not following some nobleman's orders for the sake of it, but protecting what I care about. Protecting Northreach. I honestly don't Honorable. know when those monsters will return, but I'm certain they're not finished with us yet. And when they do come back, we need to be ready for them. We need to stand together, all of us. And with you to lead us, my lady, I reckon we can do it. It was you who finally convinced me, Clive. There's no point following orders if they go against everything you believe. Indeed. All of us, standing together. That has always been Northreach's best hope, and one which still lies within our grasp. We have only to turn our attentions to the true enemy. Thank you, Philippe, for showing me what I must do. Anything for you, milady. Speaking of uh, standing together, would you mind if I borrowed a few of the lads from the Vale to help keep watch around the town? I fear his eminence has loftier tasks in mind for the guard. Not at all. Be my guest. Wouldn't be the first time. Ah, good. We have him on our side, as, at least. There may be hope for Northreach yet. Especially with men like you and Philippe to champion our cause. I, for my part, shall continue to work upon the Duke in the stubborn belief that I might still tempt him into joining hands. But I, I suspect about I that. shall have to call upon your aid again. Until then, Clive. It Until might then. cost you. <laughs> Although we kind of have too much money right now. We could do some charity work. Oh. I think we might... Oh, oh, okay, it's over there. Uh, I'm not gonna do it today, though. So, this is where I end this episode. Thank you all for watching and bye-bye.